hello and welcome back to the she gallery show thank you so much for being with us today we are with a very special guest kate schellinger with the imd that is the illinois medical district and our other special guest is you watching from home and please remember that this is a live segment which means that you can join the conversation at any time don't worry about cutting us off uh, we want you to join the conversation, ask questions, or just comment, whatever it is that you would like to do. The phone number is 312-738-1060, and that number will also be found at the bottom of the screen throughout the segment. Um, you do notice that we still have our evolution symbol um, here. This is a, an event that we had at the beginning of this year that we've been celebrating for the last two years. We do have an upcoming panel discussion just next month now that you could register for at our website. If you visit our website at sharinghisenergygallery.net, you can go to our now section and there you can find more information about that. But today we are here with Kate Schellinger with the IMD. So Kate, why don't you talk to us a little bit about your background? We know that you are chief of staff now, mm -hmm. but who were you before you were chief of staff? Yeah, I'll share a little bit of my journey and my experience with the arts before coming to IMD. So I grew up in Evanston, which um, K through eight uh, incorporated arts into the school curriculum. I went to public schools in Evanston. so went through music class, drama class, um, even in high school they added on additional electives like photography, radio, TV, film, so oh, doing wow. what the people behind the scenes here do. <laughs> um, so so that was kind of my, my arts education in school. I also had a really wonderful history teacher at Evanston Township High School who taught history through the lens of art oh, because beautiful. art is really a reflection yes. of the society that produces mm -hmm. it. So I thought that that was just like so different and such a great way to learn history through Absolutely. art and, um, and vice versa too I think that many times we are able to learn about art through history exactly yeah exactly um, so yeah so art has always kind of been an interest a hobby I took piano lessons as a kid not for very long because I wasn't great at it <laughs> but um, you know dabbled in it but it's always been something that I just enjoy doing on vacations I love going to art museums or on art tours um, mm. so it's just always something that I've enjoyed although <laughs> uh, saying all that I did go to school um, in with the interest of um, going into the healthcare. So um, I went to Northwestern for my undergrad, I got a degree in chemistry, and then I went to UIC, right here in the medical district, <laughs> which I didn't even realize at the time, um, but I got a master's in public oh, wow. health in epidemiology. Um, so then from there, I went to go work at the Chicago Department of Public Health, um, and I worked in public health emergency preparedness, which is a very wow. interesting field. Um, so I worked there for almost seven years, and then was offered the opportunity to come to the IMD. So wow. that's, that's where I'm now. I've been Full here. Full circle, yeah. studied here, and somehow you made it back to the arts. And we'll get to that in just a second. So. What exactly is the Illinois Medical District? We know that it is in the heart of Chicago. We know that it is our neighbor. And what what when I think of the Illinois Medical District, I think of all of the hospitals that are that are in this community. But can you better help us understand what is the IMD and in your own involvement with the Illinois Medical District? Yeah, absolutely. So we are sitting here in the Can TV studios and we're actually in the Illinois Medical District right now. Um, so the IMD is a 560-acre special use zoning district in Chicago. It was created by a state statute in 1941, so it's been around a long time. Quite a bit. Um, 1941, and back to history. <laughs> yeah, even back then they had the idea that this could be a concentrated area in the city for health care. Um, for healthcare, health education, biotechnology, and to really keep this as an ecosystem focused on health and wellness. Uh, so we have four major hospitals here. We have Rush University Medical Center, we have the Jesse Brown VA, we have UI Health, and we have uh, Stroger Hospital of Cook County. We also have about 40 other um, either healthcare, health education, social services, government, other healthcare related organizations that are here in the IMD. Um, so those are all the organizations that make up the IMD. I should also, also mention that it is a geographically defined area, so I'll tell you what the borders are. So it's uh, the 290 Expressway to the north, um, 14th or 15th Street, essentially the rail yard to the south, um, Ashland on the east, and Oakley on the west. 
Um, so we have a board of commissioners that oversees the district. Um, so those are politically appointed. So those are appointed by the governor, um, Chicago's mayor, and the Cook County board president. Um, so they really are, are responsible for the oversight of everything that goes on in the district. We have a small staff, 12 no people. No pressure, 12 people. <laughs> wow. Who we oversee the day-to-day -day functions of the district. Um, and really the day-to-day the -day responsibilities of the district are um, we have authority over zoning and land use, so we are responsible for developing and maintaining a master plan. So that's really about kind of the urban planning, the look and feel of the district. Um, a roadmap for, you know, how we want to develop out the district and our vision, what we might, you know, envision the district looking like in the future. Um, so then, besides that, as our main responsibility, we also work with all the organizations in the district um, to really see where we can work together. How can we improve the district for all the people who come here every day? So that's patients, students, visitors. We see over 80,000 people here in the district daily. Wow. Um, so that's 80, quite, a, quite a large number of people. Chicago is a big city. Um, it's a really big city and you know I was just walking to my eye doctor the other day and I was by I was in the Gold Coast and I'm walking and I take a lot of pride in living in Chicago and even though I was born in Mexico I do feel like a Chicagoan and when people ask me where I'm from I say well I'm from Chicago and I say with pride if I'm in the city or if I'm outside of the city I'm still very proud of being here in Chicago and also being a part of the Illinois Medical District I also live in the Illinois Medical District right I'm like a neighbor um, so it was, it was, you know, I've been part of CAN TV since 2017 and when I first started here I was just the host, a producer, what I'm doing right now. And then we had our first exhibit here and then the ED invited me to join the board and this year I became secretary with the board. So I've really grown not just with the station but with this community and it has allowed me to expand my connections and my ability to help um, others and through the arts, of course. So this spring, right, mm -hmm. there was this um, Illinois Medical District Art Council that was uh, launched, I guess if that's the right word to say, and you are leading this organization. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk to us about the Illinois Medical District's Art Council? Absolutely. And I'll even back up a little bit and mention that we have a brand new executive director. Well, she's not brand new anymore. She joined us in December of 2021, Allison Hansen. So she came to us with a ton of hospital experience, um, which has been really valuable in um, creating our strategy and what we want to do with the district. Um, so we have four pillars in our strategy, and I'll mention how that um, kind of relates to the art Council. Mm -hmm. So our first strategy is identity. So creating a sense of place in the IMD. I think that if you were to walk outside and say, um, you know, what's the IMD? Or did you know you're in the IMD? People would kind of give you a puzzled look and maybe <laughs> not really know what you're talking about. So we want to really cement in people's minds, like, what is the IMD? What's it known for? When you're here, you know you're here. Um, so how can we do that? Uh, the next pillar is collaboration. So I think I mentioned that before, that that's really one of the things that we want to do is be a convener. So this is the councils, which I'll talk about. So Arts Council, which is our focus today, but we also have councils um, that cover um, the hospital CEOs, so getting them together as they're some of the largest employers in the district. Um, we have a council around safety and security. Uh, we have a council around real estate and development, and we have some brand new councils, one that I don't think has even met yet around education, so that's coming, that's very exciting, and one around green space and gardening. So how can we um, beautify the district through adding more green space, more trees and flowers and plants? Um, can I just mention that She Gallery and Can TV, we were invited to to the Illinois Medical District's headquarters, right? And that is where we met, or to your office, to your main office, and that's mm -hmm. where we met um, Allison Hansen and Ryan Gage, who's no longer with IMD, but I'm sure is still a part of the community. And um, and I got a chance to look at that roadmap that you're talking about, and I just want the audience, for people that are watching, to really um, understand how much work and dedication is put behind all of this for you because this is truly serving the people of Chicago, right? So this, this uh, Arts Council 
who who's involved in this arts council and why is it so important not just for the people but also to you mm -hmm. yeah so i think that um you know there's you can look at studies you can look at anecdotal evidence there's really a strong connection between health and wellness and the arts and whether that's experiencing art in a hospital setting where it maybe reduces your stress of waiting or, or seeing a doctor, um, or whether that's being used in a therapeutic setting for people processing trauma or PTSD or um, you know undergoing medical teachers, that there's really a strong connection that um, the arts can impact your overall health and wellness. Um, so I know that Allison saw this in her hospital experience, um, that that is a part of what hospitals try to create in, in terms of um, within their building and, and for their patient experience. Um, and there already is a lot of existing art in the IMD, kind of if you know where to look. We have a lot of organizations in the IMD um, that are producing art, doing arts programming, um, the whole the, the whole gamut of, of things. So we thought, why not bring together this, this group of people who are interested in the arts, who are working in the arts, and see what we can do together. You know, make more of an impact um, bringing everyone together in that way. So we look to, um, you know, all the partners in the IMD. So that's people like local artists, so yourself, mm -hmm. which we're very happy to have you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we have uh, Nicole Beck, who's a resident of the Tri-Taylor neighborhood, which, which is a residential community within the IMD. Um, and she is a professional artist and she has uh, works that are commissioned um, by governments, by universities. She actually has a piece here in the IMD that's in front of the um, Department of Public Health's building on Ogden. So you can go take a look at that. Um, we have representatives from CAN TV on the Arts Council. Um, so <laughs> that's kind of your other hat, right? <laughs> um, we have the that's Chicago family. Yeah, the Chicago Center for Arts and Technology, which offers no cost arts programming for middle schoolers and high schoolers. And they uh, are really interesting and they look at the intersection between technology and art. So they're looking more at digital art and 3D maker labs, which is really cool and really different. Mm -hmm. um, we have Chicago Lighthouse, which is uh, provide services for people who uh, are blind or have other low visibility um, and so they're a great partner we have on the Arts Council. We have Cook County Health so they have their own kind of patient experience uh, officer who's, who's part of Arts Council. Um, we have a new uh, development partner who has just joined the district and they are planning a data center at the corner of Damon and 13th and they're going to be looking to um, have some rotating art as part of their building, which is wonderful that even, you know, those private sector partners who are not even yet in their building are, have, already have plans <laughs> for art. Um, we, is, yeah, we have, great energy. Yeah, we have Rush University Medical Center. Um, and we have Snow City Arts, which does art therapy for um, for the pedi pediatric patients at Rush, at UI Health, and at Stroger. They work with all three hospitals in the IMD that have uh, pediatric departments. Yeah, and a lot of people didn't know about this, that they actually work with all these hospitals since 1998. It's yep. amazing. Yep. One, they're wonderful. We have Urban Autism Solutions, which has, um, a lot of people don't know, a farm stand in the IMD. They have their own um, farm and uh, greenhouse where they grow um, not only um, plants and flowers, but fruits and vegetables. And during the summer months, they operate a farm stand a couple times a week, which is great. So people can walk over on their lunch break and get fresh fruits and veggies and um, All the healthy stuff. Mm -hmm, exactly, exactly. We have uh, Urban Prairie Waldorf School, which offers um, education for K through eight. So they have arts built into their curriculum, and uh, so they're a great partner. And then we have uh, Vertiport Chicago, who is also part of our Urban. arts council. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I just, I just noticed. Sorry, were you no? Done? Go ahead. Yeah. And she gallery were part two. Um, that you first mentioned uh it, it's it's interesting to me hearing about your your background and your childhood with this big interest in art thing you studied medical right or you went into the medical field but somehow the universe sent you back mm -hmm. to be able to work in both how does that feel yeah i think it's really interesting and like i said i think there really is a strong connection and i think 
that um, the group is really enthusiastic and really um, ready for this, was, was ready for this to, to mm -hmm. come about and um, is really excited to not only just like, meet other people who are working in this space who kind of are at that intersection of art and wellness, um, but to be able to share, be able to grow their audiences, um, to be able to think of, you know, collaborative projects we can work on together. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of um, patient groups that they work with who think can really benefit. Patient groups, students. Um, one I forgot to mention is the Road Home pro Program, which is a really unique and wonderful program based oh out of Rush. Yes. Um, so they work with veterans and veterans' families um, on uh, processing uh, PTSD and trauma from, from being in the service. Um, and they uh, offer art therapy as part of their programming, which, um, again, speaks to the connection between art and wellness. Yeah. Let's, let's talk a little bit more about that. So she just mentioned uh, the Road, Road Home program uh, out of Rush, and yesterday was 9-11, and we all know what happened in 9-11. That's a very um, significant date for everybody here in America, and it's a day that nobody will ever forget. And what they did, this Road, uh, Road Home program, was they had a, a, an exhibition at Rush at Rush University Medical Center and they had the veterans, as you mentioned, create this workshop for healing so they could heal on their own. So I just want to show you, um, Omari, can you please take us to the, to the screen? Thank you so much. So I just want to show you, I want to share as we talk a little bit more about, about healing through the arts. These are some of the images that I was able to take yesterday when, when I attended this exhibition. And something else that you mentioned, the enthusiasm in this group. We've been meeting the last Thursday of every month when we can make it, for the most part, via Zoom. And yesterday was my first time meeting Stephanie Clark, who's leading this, um, this program here at Rush University. And today is my first time meeting you in person. Mm -hmm. And I really look forward to meeting everybody else at, at Vertiport at the end of this month. So something that's really beautiful about this Arts Council to me is that it's really not just serving the, the community, but it's allowing, as you mentioned, for us to work together and think of other ways that we can collaborate. So hopefully we can be a good example to our community and show how beneficial collaborations are. And so this was a healing process here um, because they took their clothes and they made it into this pulp paper and were able to express their sentiments directly onto this paper that they essentially made, which was really amazing. Um, so this, this program was, uh, the art, leading artist was Drew, I, I, don't, I didn't catch his last name, but you can tell the people that were involved here, this is a veteran and she was showing me she just couldn't wait to show me the work that she did my first time meeting her and she was so proud to say this is my sister this is my mother these are women who served women of color who fought so hard to be her to be a part of something and they sacrificed their lives for us and forever they will be healing because they had experiences that you know, her name was Lisa, these are more photos of her family and her. Um, because for many of you who, who have served or know people that have served, like I, my sister and my brother are veterans and some of us lose people to, to people in the military and again going back to 9-11, this is, these are, these are real heroes. Mm -hmm. And I want to say that COVID, this is the machine that was used for the Pope, I want to say that COVID all of the nurses and healthcare workers that were at the front lines, one of my brothers also, the, or one of them who was a, a veteran, who is a veteran, was also at the front lines. Now he's a nurse for COVID. And I want to say that everybody that works in these institutions are, are real heroes. Yeah. Speaking of that, there was actually a, a project that went on during COVID um, that was the Murals for Medical Relief. Um, so that took place in 2020 here in the IMD um, and other locations, I believe, as well. But small businesses here in the IMD donated their wall space 
artists donated their time and this company Muros donated all the painting supplies and led a digital fundraising campaign um, that would then donate back to the hospitals for those medical heroes like you said during COVID. So um, there were several businesses along Taylor. Um, Lulu's Hot Dogs for instance had a, <laughs> uh, had a mural um, and uh, our a building that we as the IMD own on Ogden has I think murals on both sides. So um, it was a really special event um, that took place like you said to honor those heroes during COVID. Yeah. And uh, what I've noticed is that since COVID, uh, I feel like a lot of people have needed this to heal, right? Um, not just for COVID, but also the, the Black Lives Matter movement. It seems like it really changed and shaped the world. Um, so you have a tagline. The <laughs> Illinois Medical District has a tagline, and I just love this tagline. <laughs> it's made in Chicago, changing the world. And we're going to take you to the screen. If you can please take us back to the screen, and here we are, Illinois Medical District, Made in Chicago, Changing the World. Can you talk to us about what that means? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we are the Illinois Medical District. Um, like I said in the, in the very beginning, we were created by a state statute and were originally um, part of the state government. We no longer are. Um, however, we retain the name Illinois Medical District, but we are very much located in Chicago. So we wanted to, to call to Chicago, to the Chicago flag. Um, so you can see our logo is reminiscent of the Chicago star, which is in the, the flag, um, as is the color palette used, so the, the blue and the red. Um, but in our star, we have those intersections where the blue and the red join together to make purple. And so that um, is meant to represent the collaborations that take place between the different organizations in the IMD. And that's what we're all about, collaboration and working together. Um, and then the tagline, Made in Chicago, Changing the World. So we definitely wanted to say, Illinois Medical District is in Chicago, but we <laughs> want to have an impact further than that. We want the things that are done here um, to really be seen worldwide. We want to be a leader in patient care. We want to be a leader in health education. We want to be a leader in all these areas. And we want to be a leader in, in uh, arts and wellness. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Now, if you visit our website at sharinghisenergygallery.net, you can go to the, to the um, section which is now. Ultimately, this is now the same section that's here. And it'll take you to summer and fall programs. This is, this is, I know a lot of people are just feeling like it's fall because that's what it feels like it's outside, but technically it's still summer. So here you could find more information on the National Suicide Prevention Month, which is this month. Um, suicide is a serious illness and it should be taken very seriously. So here we have some resources for, for everybody to, to just peek at and learn a little bit more because you may or may not realize that there might be somebody around you that has signs that you may not be aware of. So we really encourage you to uh, visit the website and learn a little bit more about these, these signs. And here you can also see this is um, our, our season. This is also how you can stream us live here for the Can TV show. And this is the upcoming um, registration, which is free at Newberry Library that's coming up next month with East, Pango, and myself. Uh, we thank again Dr. Gil Gage for putting up this exhibit and for inviting us to lead the graffiti workshop. And then here you can also go to our publication section. And here we are, Illinois Medical District, the Catalyst Newsletter. This is the newsletter that Allison Henson um, put together to invite the public and learn more about what we are doing, what the Illinois Medical District is doing. And we encourage you to join the email list which you can also find through their website at illinoismedicaldistrict.org and get involved and learn more about what Chicago is doing, what the IMD is doing, what we are doing. So Allison, Allison, I'm so sorry. Allison must be thinking and speaking of us. Um, Kate, can you please share with the audience mm -hmm. um, some final thoughts for the last minutes on just some final thoughts, anything that you would like to share? Yeah, we're really excited wellness. about the um, ongoing Arts Council initiatives. Um, and please keep an eye on the Catalyst to find more. Um, one I can mention is there's an exhibit coming up. Um, the Chicago Lighthouse has a photography uh, for all uh, six-week course for CPS students who are visually impaired. And they are going to work with the uh, Shy Cat to put on an exhibit. Um, so more details to come on that. But that's just one example. Of Did you hear that? The blind <laughs> photography? 
Yep. I'm sorry. Very That's cool. just amazing. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing. Who was it? Was it Beethoven that was deaf? I think so. It was Beethoven that was deaf. I mean, these. This is this is just an example of how much heart and intuition comes into this art and healing. When you're able to photograph without having this ability to see, you sort of create a different kind of vision. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's just one thing we're excited about. More, more to come. All right. Thank you again so much, Kate. Thank you. It's and an thank honor. you, audience. And thank you, Can TV. And we look forward to seeing you again next week.